In this video, we're going to talk about how to answer rational expression word problems. When we're solving rational expression word problems, there's very often a rate at the heart of the question. The rate could be measured in meters per second or kilometers per hour speed or dollars per person. Perhaps a group of people are splitting the cost of dinner. Houses per day, perhaps someone's a house cleaner or house painter and wants to know how long it takes to complete a job. There's many other possibilities. Our very first job in one of these questions is to write a let statement for X. And very frequently, the let statement will be given by the sentence in the question that makes the specific request for information. So for example, if there's a question, a sentence in the question that says, how many days did it take to clean the house? then we can likely begin our solution with the statement, let X be the number of days that it took to clean the house. If there's a sentence that asks how many t-shirts were in the case originally, we can likely begin our solution with the statement, let X be the number of t-shirts in the case initially. And then we want to compare two fractions. So for instance, if we decide that the rate will be measured in dollars per t-shirt, we might be able to compare the dollars per t-shirt when the t-shirts were purchased with the dollars per t-shirt when the t-shirts were sold. Or if the rate is kilometers per hour, we might be able to compare the kilometers per hour on the way to the store with the kilometers per hour on the way home from the store. And then when we make a comparison like this, we'll be able to construct an equation that we can then solve. So we're gonna do an example. Something that used to help me out when I was a student is I would specifically look for the word per. So if uh, the question involved kilometers per hour, that would help me find the rate. Uh, maybe the word per isn't actually in the question, but I can kind of uh, use my logic and my intuition to decide where it would be if it was in there. Okay, so uh, that used to help me. Maybe it'll help you. Let's do an example here. Rima bought a case of concert t-shirts for $450. She kept two t-shirts for herself and sold the rest for $560, making a profit of $10 on each t-shirt sold. So right away, I would say to myself, okay, $10 per t-shirt. What that tells me is uh, I'm going to be comparing uh, dollars and t-shirts and dollars per t-shirt somehow. But I need to begin with a let statement. So we'll say how many t-shirts were in the case originally. I'll say let x be the number of t-shirts in the case originally. Okay. Then um, want to determine the units for the rate. Uh, based on this question, it appears the rate is measured in dollars per t-shirt. Now, what's the comparison to be made? The question compares dollars per t-shirt when the case was purchased with dollars per t-shirt when the case was sold. Now that we know all that, let's make a table. We're going to compare dollars and t-shirts and dollars per t-shirt with t-shirts being purchased and t-shirts being sold. This way of setting up a table is going to be pretty common. Okay, you'll get used to it as we go. Now, uh, if the rate being discussed is dollars per t-shirt, we make the columns dollars, shirts, and dollars per t-shirt. And then since we're comparing t-shirts when they were sold with when they were purchased, we can make those our titles of our two rows. And we want to fill in the table. Now, we know that X refers to the number of t-shirts in the case originally. So we can put X in the spot of the table that talks about number of t-shirts when they were purchased. And then we see that she kept two t-shirts for herself. So that means that when she sold them, she sold X minus two t-shirts, okay? Now we know the t-shirts were purchased for $450 and they were sold for $560. So we can put those in the appropriate spots of the table. And we know the entry for dollars and entry for t-shirts in the t-shirts purchased row so then dollars per t-shirt will simply be dollars over t-shirts. And in the uh, sold row, it'll be dollars over t-shirts, just like that, okay? Now we wanna look for a comparison that was made between the rate in one row and the rate in the other row. Well, it tells us in the question she made a profit of $10 on every shirt sold. That means that the dollars per t-shirt in the 
t-shirt sold row okay so dollars per t-shirt in the t-shirt sold row which is right there exceeds the dollars per t-shirt in the t-shirts purchased row so we can say that the dollars per t-shirt in the t-shirt sold row 560 over x minus 2 equals the dollars per t-shirt in the t-shirts uh, purchased row which is 450 minus or 450 over x plus 10 because this number what she sold them at exceeds this number what she purchased them at so the bigger number which is this one is going to equal the smaller number plus the difference between them which is 10. now uh, if it helps you think about it this way 560 uh, is dollars and x minus 2 is t-shirts so this is measured in dollars per t-shirt the second um, rational expression is also measured in dollars per t-shirt because it's um, uh, $450 over x t-shirts the 10 is actually measured in dollars per t-shirts as well when we say $10 on each t-shirt sold that means $10 per t-shirt so all three of those are actually measured in the same units so we have a legitimate uh, rational expression equation so uh, this is our expression we don't have to factor the denominators we see the lowest common denominator is x times x minus 2 so uh, right away we can say the restrictions will be that x cannot equal 0 or 2 but remember x and x minus 2 both represent the number of t-shirts and we know that they can't be negative they got to be positive so that means that uh, x is going to be greater than equal to 0 x minus 2 is going to be greater than or equal to 0. Uh, now since if i told you that a number had to be greater than or equal to 0 and also had to be greater than or equal to 2 you would say to me okay that simply means that x has to be greater than or equal to 2. but we also said a while ago that uh, x can't equal 2. so we're simply going to say that whatever answer we come up with we have to have it greater than 2. Okay? So now let's solve, finally. Uh, 560 over x minus 2 equals 450 over x plus 10. Um, our lowest common denominator is x times x minus 2. So I get each of these rational expressions uh, over that denominator. Then I can multiply each term by that, clearing out the denominators and giving us this equation. Many people are able to just jump straight to this equation. If you can, that's fine. Just make sure you understand your restrictions. Uh, when we solve that, we want to make one side equal to zero, which we do. And then we're able to uh, common factor and then trinomial factor. And at the end of all that math, we end up saying that x is 18 or x is negative 5. But remember, we said x had to be greater than 2. So that means x is equal to 18. So there were 18 shirts originally in that case. Now, um, if you don't do all the restriction stuff that I said at the start and you don't show that work, it's okay, but you have to make sure, uh, fundamentally what I'm interested in is, do you know that this answer right here is not valid? That's my main concern. Uh, 18 t-shirts in the case. Now, if you want to say, okay, what does that mean altogether? Here's what it means. Uh, Rima uh, initially paid $450 for 18 shirts. Uh, $450 over 18 is $25. She paid $25 for each shirt. Then uh, she sold 16 of those shirts for $560. $560 over 16 is $35. And note the profit is $10 on each shirt. All right, let's do another example. Frida's motorboat travels at a steady rate of 20 kilometers per hour in still water. Uh, but the water in Massey River is not still. So she's going to ride her boat 150 kilometers up the river and 150 kilometers down the river. And the entire trip will take her 16 hours. We want to know the speed of the current. So uh, discussion of the vocabulary in this question. The river has a current. In other words, the water in the river moves in a particular direction. So when Frida moves up the river or up river, she's moving against the current. So while her boat may travel at a rate of 20 kilometers an hour in still water, 
it will not move that fast traveling upriver because she's being slowed down by the current. On the other hand, when she travels down the river or down river, she's moving with the current. So her boat might travel uh, at 20 kilometers an hour in still water, but it'll be traveling even faster down river because the current will be helping her. So we're going to let X be the speed of the current. Okay, now just really quickly to illustrate one more time what's happening. Suppose the current's two kilometers an hour. If she's moving her boat against the current, she's only going 18 kilometers an hour. The boat's going 20, but the current is pushing her back too, so it's 18. But then when she turns around and comes back downriver, she's got the current helping her. It'll be 20 plus the speed of the current. Okay, so this two is just an example. It's not actually what's happening in our question. In our question, we don't know the speed of the current, so we're saying she's traveling 20 minus x when she's going upriver, 20 plus x when she's going downriver. Now, uh, the rate is measured in kilometers per hour. Okay, So we're going to have, when we build our table, a column titled kilometers, a column titled hours, and a column titled kilometers per hour. And we're given a relationship between these rates going upriver and downriver. The way they do that is they tell us the sum of them. So we're, our rows are going to be entitled upriver and downriver. So this is what our table is going to look like. We got kilometers, we've got hours, and we've got kilometers per hour. Okay? Now, um, since uh, x is the speed of the current we know that upriver it's 20 minus x downriver it's 20 plus x um, we know also that the distance up the river is 150 and the distance down the river is 150 okay now um, we know that speed is equal to distance over time that's something that we're all quite familiar with well that means that time is equal to distance over speed so I can put in my hours when she's going upriver 150 over 20 minus x. And I can put in my hours when she's going downriver 150 over 20 plus x because, again, time is equal to distance over speed for each of those rows. Okay? There we go. Now, what do we know is true about this question? We know that the total time was 16. That means the time it took her on the way there added to the time it took her on the way back is equal to 16. We've got ourselves a wonderful rational uh, expression equation. Now, uh, first glance, we say that the restrictions are x can equal 20 and x can equal negative 20. But we also know the current's not going to be negative because we're using terms like upriver and downriver, and those are terms that logically mean we're, we're saying that the current is positive. So the current's going to be positive, but it cannot equal 20. Okay? Now, the lowest common denominator is going to be 20 minus x over 20 plus x. And so we can restate, if we like, our original or rational uh, expression equation um, like this, where we get the common denominator and show what the numerator should be. We then multiply through by 20 minus x and 20 plus x. That clears out the denominators, and we get this equation right here. If you can get yourself to this equation right here without showing the other steps, that's fine with me. And you don't have to show all the work with the uh, restrictions either. It's just good to know that at the end, we might get uh, an invalid answer. Okay, so now what we're going to do is distribute, and then we're going to collect our like terms. Whoops. And uh, we'll distribute on that side as well. And when we do that, we end up ultimately, after simplifying, with the uh, equation 16x squared minus 400 equals 0. Common factoring out of 16, we have x squared minus 25 is equal to 0. Ultimately, that means x is either equal to 5 or negative 5. But since we said earlier that the uh, current's going to be positive, x is positive, that means x is going to equal 5. Okay? All right, how about if a group of friends go out for dinner and they agree ahead of time to split the bill? Well, the final bill, in this case, comes to $840. But when they go to split it, three of the people reveal that they forgot to bring their money. So imagine you go out for dinner. There's a whole bunch of you. And you're all going to split the bill. So you have an idea what it's going to cost. But then three people say, we forgot our money. 
everyone else obviously is going to have to pay more. Okay? So because the three people each forgot their money, everyone who is paying is going to pay an additional five bucks. Okay? When there's less people paying for the same thing, each one of them has to pay more. Now, the question says, how many people went out for dinner? So we're going to say, let X be the number of people who went out for dinner. The rate we're considering is dollars per payer. So we're going to make a table where the columns are dollars and payers and dollars per payer. Hopefully, this is something that you're uh, now getting used to seeing. Whoops. Hopefully, when you see here uh, that once you figure out what the rate is, it's kind of easy to figure out what the column should be. Now, what are we comparing? We're comparing what these people thought was going to happen, their expectation, with the reality of what actually did happen. Okay? Now, X is the number of people that were expected to pay because they thought everyone was going to pay. So, in expectation, X people, i.e. everyone who went out, would be a payer. But in reality, X minus three people were payers because those three people forgot their money. Now, the total bill was 840 bucks. That doesn't matter whether everyone's paying or not. The restaurant wants their 840 bucks. This is not a dine and dash scenario. Okay, so now dollars per payer. Well, that's simply dollars over payer in each one of those rows. There we go. Now, think about this. Each person paid five bucks more than they thought they would. So the real, in reality, the dollars per payer was equal to what they expected it to be plus five. So the reality, dollars per payer right here, was equal to the expected dollars per payer plus that additional five. And every one of those arrows is pointing to something that's being measured in dollars per payer, okay? Obviously, these two are measured in dollars per payer. But when it says that uh, each of the people who pays has to pay an additional $5, that's also saying dollars per payer. So we've got ourselves a nice little uh, rational expression equation. Now, we see the restrictions are x doesn't equal 0 or 3. We also know um, that the number of payers is going to have to be positive, whether we're talking about expectation or reality. So X has to be greater than zero and X also has to be greater than three. So putting all of those restrictions together, X can't equal zero, X can't equal three, X must be greater than zero, X must be greater than three. Really all we're saying is that X must be greater than three. Okay, now, now that we know that restriction, again, you don't have to show all that work. As long as at the end you appropriately get rid of extraneous uh, solutions, that's fine with me. You don't have to show that work. Now, um, the lowest common denominator is x times x minus 3, when we look at that rational expression equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to make each denominator equal to x times x minus 3 and appropriately multiply the numerators. Then we're going to multiply each term by x times x minus 3 because we're considerate of our restrictions. We're allowed to do that. And that's going to clear all the denominators out, and that's going to get us to this equation right here. You don't have to show any of that work with the denominators, etc. If you can get to this equation, that's fine with me. And then ultimately, a couple of steps from now to be considerate of your uh, restrictions, that's fine with me as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, distribute and we're going to uh, see that we've got a quadratic equation. We're going to make one side equal to zero. And then we're going to factor, and we get uh, this. That means x is equal to 24, or x is equal to negative 21. Again, you don't have to show the earlier work with the restrictions. Just be able to know whether one of these is impossible, or both impossible, or both possible. It turns out this is impossible because logically negative 21 people didn't go out for dinner. So therefore, x is equal to 24. 24 people went out for dinner. So uh, what does that mean logically? Uh, what it means is um, 24 people went out for dinner. The bill was 840 bucks, And after um, they all paid their money, um, after, they all, after they all expected uh, 24 people to be split evenly among 840 bucks, 
they all expected that it was going to be $35 a piece. But in reality, only 21 people brought wallets. It still came to 840 bucks, so each of them had to pay $40. And that's the difference of $5 that we were talking about in the question. And finally, let's do one more of these here. Now, this one's a little different than what you might have seen in grade 11. It takes Henrietta eight minutes longer than it takes Jojo to eat a bag of potato chips. But when they share a bag of potato chips, they both uh, chow down. They're able to finish it in nine minutes and 36 seconds. So how long does it take each of them to eat a bag? All right. Well, it says how long does it take each of them to eat a bag? We'll pick one of them. In this case, we'll pick Henrietta. And we'll say... Let H be the time it takes Henrietta to eat a bag of potato chips. Now, since Jojo, uh, since it takes Henrietta eight minutes longer, that'll mean H minus eight is the length of time it takes Jojo to eat a bag of potato chips. So H is the time for uh, Henrietta and uh, H minus eight is the time for Jojo. What's interesting about this one is when we say H, we're saying minutes per bag but minutes is the independent variable time's always the independent variable so what we want is we want to have this in terms of bags per minute we always state slope with the independent variable in the denominator you know for instance y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 we want that independent variable in the denominator so we don't want to say minutes per bag because if we say minutes per bag we're putting time in the numerator. We want time in the denominator instead, bags per minute. So if Henrietta is going eight uh, uh, H minutes for a bag of potato chips, what she's really doing is one over H bags per minute. So just think about this for a second. If it takes Henrietta four minutes to eat a bag of potato chips, what we're gonna say instead is she eats one fourth of a bag per minute. Okay, using the same logic, since it takes H minus eight uh, minutes for Jojo to eat a bag, we'll say that she can eat one over H minus eight bags per minute. Okay, so we're going to restate each of our uh, individuals this way. Now, we want to figure out how much time it takes. We have nine minutes and 36 seconds. So let's figure out how much time 36 seconds is at first. So 36 seconds is 36 over 60 minutes. 36 over 60 is 3 over 5. So when we say 9 minutes and 36 seconds, we're really saying 9 and 3 fifths minutes. Okay? Well, uh, 9 and 3 fifths, that's the same as 48 fifths minutes. So when these two people get together, they uh, can eat a bag of potato chips in 48 fifths minutes. So that's like saying 48 fifths minutes per bag. But remember, we want minutes in the denominator. So we're going to say 5 48 bags per minute. And so we're going to be able to say that this 1 over h plus this 1 over h minus 8 is equal to this 5 over 48. Okay. There we go. Now the restrictions are that h cannot equal 0 and h cannot equal 8 from that rational expression equation. But we also know, truthfully, that h has to be greater than 0 because it's going to be um, a positive number of minutes per bag. Similarly, H minus 8 has to be greater than 0 because that was JoJo's minutes per bag. Those are both going to have to be positive. So putting together H greater than 0 and H minus 8 greater than 0, we see that ultimately our restriction is H has got to be greater than 8. Now, if you don't do all that work at the start, but you're able to accommodate for it at the end by getting rid of an extraneous solution, that's fine. So we've got this statement right here. Uh, our lowest common denominator is going to be 48h, h minus 8. Putting every uh, rational expression shown over that denominator, we can see that uh, this is the equation we get. Multiplying each rational expression by that denominator gives us this expression right here. Uh, this equation, sorry. Uh, setting one side equal to 0. We get 0 equals 5h squared minus 136h plus 384. 
uh, we can factor and we see that either h is going to be 16 over 5 or h is going to be 24. But this h is equal to 16 over 5 is extraneous uh, because earlier we said h has to be greater than 8. Uh, why does it have to be greater than 8? Because if Henrietta uh, takes 6, if 16 over 5 is equal to 3.2. If Henrietta takes 3.2 minutes to eat a bag, but um, jo but she takes 8 minutes longer than Jojo, then that would mean Jojo was taking negative 4.8 minutes to eat a bag. And so obviously that would be impossible. So we cannot use this as a solution. Uh, but we can use this as a solution. Uh, H can equal 24. Now, if H is equal to 24, that means H minus 8 is equal to 16. And what we're really doing is we're saying um, 1 24th of a bag per minute plus 1 16th of a bag per minute is equal to, um, using our... Uh, knowledge of fractions, 3, oh sorry, it would equal 2 over 48 plus 3 over 48, which would be equal to 5 over 48. So that's what's going on in this question. But to give you your final answer, the final answer that they were asking for, it takes 24 minutes for Henrietta to eat a bag of potato chips and 16 minutes for Jojo. Uh, then when you add them, it's 5 48 uh, bags per minute, which is 48 fifths minutes per bag, which is 9 minutes and 36 seconds.